Welcome to Tech with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load data to the warehouse table from ADLS Gen 2 by using Dataflow Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. So if I go to my workspaces here and then a sale workspace and here if we'll go to Lake, not Lake House, sorry, we will go to the warehouse and then I have created this Tech Data Warehouse. If I click right there, it's going to open this window and then I can explore. So if I go to the tech uh, uh, data warehouse here and then go to schemas and then go to tables, that's where my table exists. So often uh, what we have to do, we have to load the data to some tables. As of now, they think about I don't have that table, but uh, I have CSV file sitting in the container. So here is my storage account and then in the storage account, I have containers and in the container, I have input container. Under the input container, I have input folder here and then I have sample customer DW CSV file. So let's take a look at what type of data it has. I'll go to the three dots here and then go to the view and edit. And here you can see the records. We have customer ID, first name, last name, country, emails, and the sign up date and total spend. We want to read this data and create new columns such as full name by joining first name and last name. Also, we want to, uh, if you see right here, we have a name here and then we have a domain of uh, in the email column. I would like to separate the domain and the name and uh, there are a few things maybe we can also filter the data for the country. We don't want to load all the countries. Uh. So all these things, uh, if I'm thinking to do, then uh, the only choice I, I have is the data flow. I cannot use the pipeline here. So if you go to the get data tab here in the warehouse uh, and uh, then click right there and uh, click on a new data flow gen tool. And uh, let's provide some name. So we will say df load csv and uh, that's, um, that's it. So let's uh, create this data flow and uh, now what we are going to do here, we are going to do some steps. So first of all, we need to tell from where we want to extract that data, get data from another source. So let's type a data lake and it's going to get us different sources. One of the source that we want to use here, that is a Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So here we have to provide the, the string or URL depending on the, this format. So we have say HTTPS and then you have your uh, story name dot dfs dot core dot windows dot net uh, so i'm gonna paste uh, the link here and uh, then we will go from there so if, if i go right here so you can see that this is my storage name if i go back here and uh, if i click on home and you can see this is my storage name you can always click on that one and then copy from here now this is all good and uh, what we are going to do, we are going to go to fabric again and here is the credentials. So there are two views available. I'm going to go with the file system view. We will talk about these later. You are going to see these anyways, how they are look, looking different. This is a file system view. This is going to be folder view and we are interested in the file view. So here you will say create a new connection and then in the new connection, you will choose the authentication. So I'm going to choose the account key here and then provide the account key. So if I have to go to the storage here, then I will be going to the security and networking, go to the access keys and then click show and copy this key. I will paste it right there and then hit next. As I have already created this connection, it's going to be like, hey, you already have this connection. So it uh, might give me error. So I have to select the existing connection. So see right here, it says, hey, you already have connection to this uh, um, path and uh, what you need to do. Uh, you can use existing. So I'm going to go ahead and use existing and uh, right here uh, where it say create new, I'm going to use uh, the existing. Uh, but uh, you saw that uh, I provided the account key. That's all I did last time. So hit next here and uh, now it's going to get us the list of all those files. Uh, so that's fine. We can uh, just simply create and uh, here is a file we will be working on. So right here, uh, that's the file and uh, then uh, we are going to create here. Now it is getting all the list of those files from us from that uh, uh, container. And uh, here uh, we are interested in this uh, sample uh, customer DW CSV. So let's click right there and uh, we can, uh, once we click there, it's going to work on that file. And uh, now it's uh, importing that file and it's going to get the data for us. Uh, so you can see that we have customer ID, first name, last name, country, email, and uh, other columns available. Uh, now, very first thing I want to do, add a new column. So let's say if I go to add columns here and a custom uh, column and it's going to ask me, hey, what is the name of your column? So I'm going to say full name. So in the expressions, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the first name and then I'm going to write the expressions for 
I'm uh, adding uh, space between it and uh, then uh, I'm uh, concatenating second uh, column that's the last name now this is uh, going to create our uh, full name that sounds good and now what we're gonna do we are gonna go ahead and split this email so I can select the email here and then go to the transform and then go to the uh, split uh, column here I will say by delimiter and once I click there I'm gonna go to the separator not comma but customer in my case the uh, email is containing at the red sign so I will just put that the red sign and then it's going to split that according to the that delimiter so we have email one and email two i'm going to call this one email name and the other column i'm going to call that is the email domain so that will do it and now uh, think about that if we are interested to get the data only for country maybe canada or usa so we can click right there and then uh, select the countries we would like to see the data for now think only okay we will take only usa so we are all done here and it is showing the preview of our data after applying all those transformations. Now by default if you see right here it is connected to the tech data warehouse that's my warehouse. Also you can see the destination on the right side here and say the data destination. I'm going to cancel and just show you again how to connect in case you want to connect to something different. So you will say data destination and click plus sign then select the destination. In last video we used the lake house but here we are using a warehouse and then we can click next and here it is showing you all the warehouses if you have more than one and I have only tech warehouse and then it is asking me hey you want to create a new table or you want to write to the existing table I'm going to write to the new table and what I will say I will say customer DW and then I'm going to hit next and then what we will be doing will uh, answering some more questions though so it is uh, giving me us information you want to append or replace in my case i want to replace the values every time i run it so you can uh, choose append or replace is your choice so next uh, you will be hey you want to be dynamic schema or fixed schema in my case it's a fixed schema the schema is not changing now and uh, then you have all those columns here so you have a custom id first name last name country and uh, let's scroll down a little bit and uh, you have uh, other columns as well uh, that we have created such as uh, uh, email name and uh, email domain the last column if you see right there is full name but uh, it is uh, kind of given us a warning uh, because the data type is not selected automatically and I know that it is a text type uh, so I'm going to select a text here and uh, now it is uh, selected as well now save setting and uh, then uh, what we are going to do we are going to execute in the next step so so our uh, df load csv uh, data flow is saved and now we can hit publish what it is going to do it is going to publish uh, and also it is going to execute uh, so if i will go to my workspaces here and the sales workspace and here you can see that uh, df load csv it is spinning right now it means it is publishing and also it's going to execute uh, after it's published uh, this part uh, that was uh, showing uh, those uh, dots uh, that's gone and now if you see it is a refresh uh, so it is loading the data right now so let's go to the warehouse here and uh, down we are going to go ahead to the uh, tables here and uh, then refresh uh, the tables uh, so let me see if we will get our table here so you see right there customer data warehouse or uh, dw is uh, there we can click right there and say new query and once I click there, it's going to ask me, hey, you want to select top and the rows? Yes, I do. And uh, you can see right there, it is uh, the it is, has loaded the data. So you can see that full name is created there, uh, email name and email domain is created there as well. So this is how you will be loading the data by using a data flow. Let's go back to our uh, workspace. Uh, and uh, then uh, here, uh, we can see that this has completed. Uh, if I want to refresh the data, let's say if I have deleted the data from table or uh, I want to reload I can simply refresh now and it will uh, reload uh, I can also schedule the refresh and in this case uh, I will have option uh, to the um, different time like hey what time I would like to refresh and you have a uh, daily weekly and uh, all those different times you can add to it uh, now this is uh, not really uh, um, I'm not going to cover this scheduling part here also we will perform some more data flow uh, demos and uh, then uh, I will go through all these uh, different uh, tabs here now if uh, I want to call this the data flow in the pipeline that's also possible so let's say you are here and uh, now uh, let me take you to here and uh, now you go to the pipeline here and there's a pipeline and let's get, create up a new pipeline and you can call this database in pipeline uh, maybe the very first step could be 
uh, truncating table or maybe just you know uh, you will do some few things uh, uh, that can be done so here I'm gonna call the data flow and in the data flow if I go to settings here and uh, then uh, this is my workspace and this is a uh, showing me list of the data flows I have so DF load CSV is our data flow so I can go ahead and uh, just create this pipeline and also schedule this pipeline on a different uh, by time like every 15 minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes whatever I want to do or every day so it has all those uh, details uh, different schedule available for me so this is how you will be loading the data from uh, ADLS Gen2 CSV file to the warehouse table by using uh, data flow gen 2. I thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.